Hello and welcome to Visual Studio Bytes. So now the million dollar question, why is performance testing so important? Well, performance testing is almost always conducted to address one or more risks related to opportunity cost, expense, continuity, and most important, corporate reputation. But not everyone thinks performance testing is uh, very important. Rather, people think uh, the non-functional requirements are not as important as the functional requirements and are often put off to the later stages of the project by maybe when it's too late to really make changes to accommodate for performance. So we've come across a lot of customers who had that opinion so we presented them with a short survey. A survey where we asked them users will be happy if the website loaded in less than how many seconds? how many extra seconds before they would start losing customers um, on their website and the average website would lose what percent of its revenue if it just loaded by uh, one second slower but along with this questionnaire then we presented them some facts facts uh, that have uh, been gathered by surveys facts uh, that, are, that have been uh, gathered by independent studies um, and some of the facts I'd like to share with you uh, so Google uh, conducted a study where uh, Google search found that an increase of 500 milliseconds in the search result load time resulted in 20% drop in traffic. A mere 400 millisecond delay resulted in a negative 0.59% change in searches by user. What's more, even after the delay was removed, these users still had a negative 0.21% fewer searches exactly indicating that a slower user experience affects long-term behavior. Google has included site speed as one of the metrics in the search ranking algorithm, really proving why performance is an important metric. Uh, along with that, uh, an interesting study conducted by Amazon, for every 100 milliseconds increase in load time of Amazon.com, there was a decreased sales by 1%. If you crunch the numbers together, that 1% for Amazon comes to around nine hundred and thirty two thousand dollars per day so that's a lot of money and that really answers the question why performance testing is important now you may really want to deny this but all applications break down in distress and the question is do you really know how much is too much now that we know why performance testing is so important we'll have a look at how Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate helps us uh, web performance test and load test our applications to deliver a very high quality product. I'm going to start by creating a new test project. So file new project, select test, give, a, give, the, give, give it a very creative name, test project 5, press OK. This loads uh, the project for me, loads uh, the solution items as well. I'm going to delete the unit test 1.cs. I will show you the website that I will be using for the purpose of demo today. It's um, next.co.in. This is um, a really an e-commerce website where uh, you can come in, uh, do your gadget and uh, gadget shopping. Come in, log in, um, uh, add stuff to your basket, check out, make a payment. Very simple uh, e-commerce website. So let's start by uh, right-clicking the project and selecting Add and then selecting new test. I'm going to select the web performance test. I'm going to name it browse home web site home of next website dot web test press OK. Now this brings up the uh, web test recorder. I'm going to come in and say www.next.co.in press enter and I see the moment I press enter all the request and response um, between the client and the web server is recorded um, and I can see the results uh, on the on the left pane here now without even doing anything if I press stop so uh, an analysis is done to see if there are any dynamic parameters a Visual Studio parses the results and if it's successfully able to parse the results then it gives me a success status or I get an appropriate error message of why the test failed now in our case the test has passed so let me minimize this here and let's have a look so all it is is um, let's press run run test 
Now I can see that on pressing run test, all the steps that were recorded during my session of recording are played back for me. And it's interesting to see that I get the status message of the run along with the total time it took to process that request, the, the time broken down by the request and the response, along with the bytes that were transferred between uh, the, the server and the client for that specific call. So really interesting to see, uh, you know, you call a page, but all the actions that take, uh, take place in the background, as well as how heavy or how light uh, those operations are. In this... Um, in this browser window on the on the bottom pane you can see the result of the request render for you you can see the request uh, details you can see the response details sent back from the from the from the web server you can see the context as well and uh, of course the details of um, of that step too so but in order to uh, to get really far and understand the details i will record another test uh, maybe something slightly more comprehensive uh, like a user logging in, doing a bit of shopping, browsing, adding something to the basket. So, come on, let's do a new test and na name it log in and add to basket on next website. Right? Click OK. Now, the best practices suggest that every time before I perform an action, I enter a relevant comment. Now this window, um, on, on the left pane you can see I have the record button, the pause button, the stop, the comment and the delete. So if I wanted to clear uh, all requests uh, that have been recorded so far, I can use the clear all requests button. So uh, following the best practices, I'll add a comment before I, I perform any actions. Uh, so load website and www.next dot co dot in press enter this loads the website now I'll put in the next comment which is click login press OK I'm gonna click the login button here now I already have an account on this website so I'll I'll say enter credentials and press login press OK here so I'm gonna key in the user ID and the password and click login and as you can see on the top left pane here that the user has successfully logged in so I'm just gonna browse for a product let's say I'm looking for a Nokia phone and then let's do one more uh, click search result press OK alright I think I've got enough information I can probably add one to the basket as well then add to basket right so I'm just gonna stop this test here so all the actions that we did and all the comments we put in, uh, we'll see how putting in the comments uh, benefited um, us. Alright, so the request has already been processed. Let's see, so all these comments, load website, click login, it's very easy for me to see what action was I performing which resulted in all these URLs. Now, um, you can see that when I was um, uh, some of these have uh, these extra folders here like dependent request, form post for parameters. If there were any uh, extrac extraction rules or if there were any um, query string parameters being passed, then uh, they're also extracted for me. Now um, I will show you how we can uh, do a, um, a record a test uh, and a associate a data source to it, as in make it a data driven test. All right then, for the data-driven test, I can see that the um, when I click login, uh, enter credentials and press login, if I expand this step and I expand the form post parameters, I can actually see the username and the password that I'd keyed in. If I wanted to make a data-driven test for uh, multiple users logging in uh, through the login screen, then my best bet is to come back to the solutions folder right click click add and add a new folder let's name this data 
and I will add a new CSV file so let me select new item and text file let's name it credentials dot CSV click add double click this file username password uh, the username is Ramesh at Ramesh.com and the password is one two three four five six let me save this let me close this and I will come back to the test and select this uh, logo here this icon add data source this gives me a pop-up saying what data source type would you like to add? You have the option of adding a database, a CSV file, or an XML file. Today I'll show you with the, with the CSV file. So let me select credentials. Select my CSV file. Press next to give the path of where the file is. I'll select the path. Key in the path here. Select my file. Press open and you see that it's uh, it's run an extraction so I can see uh, a couple of uh, values here uh, click next now this has added my data source uh, credentials table this is my data source so I can come back to where I can see the username and password selecting this I press F4 to load the properties page I come to the value field select this drop down expand the credentials credentials and select the username. So I'm rather than the hard coded value, I'm asking it to select the value from my CSV file, column username. And I apply the same for password. Click properties, change the value here, select credentials, credentials, select password. Now let me press save and write. There's one more thing I would like to show you here is that in my test setting files in the web test by default it's um, it, it's set up to only run the test once now if my data source has five entries I would expect the, the test to run five times because I would like it to run five times with five different users so unless in the test settings you come and change this to one run per data source it will only run the test once but for now we'll just leave it to fixed run count because we only have one value in our in our uh, data source so let's click run and see if uh, we're able to run this test uh, through the data source whether it passes or fails nice so it's uh, it successfully managed to run the test uh, and uh, so in, in this case it picked up uh, the uh, the login user from the data source so so if I add more data source values there then I can have multiple users log in and perform the rest of the actions let me close this here now another common question I've seen uh, coming up in communities is I recorded the test on my local machine so all my requests and response have local host in the URL but now I want to run the same test against the QA environment, the UAT environment, and the pre-prod environment. So how do I change the local host? Do I need to go into each of the request response and manually change it? Um, or is there a quicker way to do it? Now, that's a good question. If you click the URL and you come to the top toolbar at the top, you see you have the option of parameterize web servers. Click this. It picks up the different URLs. Now you have the option of uh, passing in the parameter name against the portion of uh, the, the URL that you would like to uh, parameterize. So fairly easy. This can uh, uh, and and uh, this will apply against all the uh, all the URLs, uh, all the requests and response. So rather than you having to manually change it, this can uh, this does the job on your behalf. Let's also look at some of the other options that are available to us so if I click on my test and right click I can see I have the option of adding a transaction now sometimes it happens uh, or most probably in the test we recorded when you add the item to the basket 
uh, and from the basket you go to the checkout to make payment probably that portion is run in a transaction and you would probably want to mimic that in your web performance test as well you'd probably want to see how much time does it take to uh, process the transaction and what would be the behavior of transaction or the time it would take to process the the transaction if there was an X load of users performing the same operation so you could certainly test that by selecting this option of add transaction you get the option of specifying where to start the transaction from and wh where to end the transaction from as well to as well um, add loop now for instance if in my test I wanted to test a scenario where I was adding five of um, the same uh, products to my basket uh, but I only recorded the test for adding that item once then I can add the loop to that section of uh, the code where uh, where I was performing the operation of adding an item to the basket so it would add that object uh, add that item to the basket for me five times then apart from that you also have the option of um, um, generating code so sometimes it happens that uh, you know we recorded a test but uh, it's probably not doing what we what we want out of it or we maybe we wanted to uh, extend it further so you have the option of generating code out of uh, the recorded test what this does is this uh, this converts your test into code now there's no uh, possibility for you to convert your code back to the test but so it's it's important that before you converting your recorded test into code you record as much as you can to an extent because there's no uh, way of going back but yes yeah, certainly it, it, it generates all the code for you so really makes it easy for you to extend uh, the logic if required uh, I'm gonna just close this here and um, apart from this sometimes uh, there are pages like login screen uh, wherein I would expect uh, the response uh, URL or the response to be triggered or the response um, to be completed within uh, three seconds so I, I have the option of adding a validation rule to this um, and the list available is um, the maximum request time so I can add this validation to say if the maximum request time exceeds five seconds then let me know uh, and this is a high level um, validation which means um, if the validation is, is, is failed then I get a threshold or, or a warning or a failure message telling me that this validation didn't succeed so it becomes very easy for me if I'm going to a, a 200-300 request page uh, to spot that that's where the, the problem is because that's where I expect the response to come back you also have the option of uh, checking whether tags uh, or whether your whether whether the uh, the page has or the view source has that inner tag that you're looking for so a couple of validation checks that you can add to your test from here right so uh, so that's about it for the um, for the web performance test recording uh, basics and um, I think uh, we're in a state to move on uh, to converting this test uh, or basically using the base of the web performance test to perform some load testing. Thank you for tuning in. Today's session was presented by Tarun Arora. I hope you liked the session.